Hey Strong People, Kale Beck here from StartingStrongMan.com and this video today is brought to you by SBD USA. Go to SBD-USA.com for the best knee sleeves, belts, etc. on the market. It's what I use for the majority of my training, their knee sleeves, elbow sleeves, wrist wraps, uh, the best quality I've found in any brand overall. Anyways, today I'm going to be breaking down the Arnold Strongman USA happened January 19th in Santa Monica at the pier. It was personally thrown uh, by Arnold Schwarzenegger himself. It was uh, put on to as a last minute qualifier for the Arnold Strongman Classic in Ohio and to uh, benefi benefit uh, firefighters throughout California where I live. The you know, state's been devastated by wildfires, especially this year and in the past uh, three years. Right before I moved about three years ago, one of the big fires was one hillside away from my house when I lived more in the country. It's definitely a terrifying thing around here and something that we need all the resources we can get to battle. So it's a great cause and it was a fantastic show. I'm so, um, I really wish I could have made it there, but that's we're not going to make this video about me. I'm going to talk about what's going on. Uh, it, they kept saying inaugural event. So I am thinking that means it's going to go on next year. And I really think this is one of the best things to happen to pro strongman in America pretty much since the Arnold Classic uh, was invented. I went to the Arnold, uh, I mean not the Arnold, sorry, this completely different Super Series in Venice in 2000, I think it was 7 or 8 when I was first aware and getting into the sport and competing. And that was a very cool show and... There were some other shows like the Mohegan Sun Super Series back then that had crowds. Uh, but this, you know, had tons of celebrities there. Arnold was there personally, uh, like, running with the competitors on the truck pole. Uh, just really cool. And it looked like the crowds were very full on the pier, and the, the energy was fantastic. And I really feel like this show could be a turning point to uh, making, you know, the American strongman scene... Uh, kind of start catching up to the sold out arenas that we get in uh, you know in Britain and Europe for strongman and that would be an, that would be a great thing for the sport uh, and everyone involved in it especially the athletes who should be treated like professionals like they were on Saturday with that kind of event that kind of crowd and just energy you know it was a it was a spectacle it was a show it was fantastic. So, with this show concluded, uh, we have the final lineup for the Arnold uh, Strongman Classic in Ohio. I will run through that at the end, but first I'm going to break down um, the, the results for uh, this show. The first event was a truck pull. It was, uh, looked like a historic original Santa Monica fire truck, maybe sometime in the 30s or 40s. Uh, you know, complete convertible. It was cool. Uh, there was a little mishap when uh, Jerry Pritchett went for, at first. They didn't have the air brake off. You know, these things are complicated. Though, and they were also doing it on the pier, on the wood. So, footing for the athletes, it's just not the surface that they're used to be that they're used to pulling on. So it threw them off a little bit. Uh, Kielzikowski, Kielzikowski ends up being still the best truck puller in the world. I feel. And winning the event a full two, almost two full seconds ahead of uh, second place, which was about a second and a half actually, which was Martins. So Martins is making some uh, headway on his truck pulls, which is a good thing because he, no, I wouldn't say struggled, but he, there's points he could make up on that event compared to like Worlds last year. And uh, let's see who got third was Jits Kramer. Man, he looked great. He's big. I've never like really watched him. I've seen like clips on Instagram, but Jits Kramer is a tall, large fellow. Um, yeah, and yeah, JF Cron got six points, and you know the times were very close. It wasn't a super heavy truck, so Kilskowski's winning time was uh, seventeen point nine one, with the slowest time being twenty two point eight one. So not much of a spread there. Um, a very quick, you know, fast event. The log press, I believe, was 385 for reps. A beautiful Slater log. Um, you could see the, you know, the crowd. You know, they had like a couple little bleachers. 
look close to sold out and there's you know walk people walking by kind of peering in it wasn't completely closed off so there's a lot of um i, I think people that weren't that didn't even buy tickets just watching uh, a lot of people zeroed the event including uh gf Caron, which i think just withdrew i think he had some sort of i don't know what his injury is or if he just you know he's doesn't want to risk anything six weeks out six weeks out from the Arnold Classic. Pretty much everyone has some sort of injury at this point, um, but it was too much to for him to continue, especially when he's already qualified. Um, um, Mateus Ozikowski, I think uh, he he zero looked like he was grabbing his shoulder. Brian Clark couldn't get it. Jerry Pritchett couldn't get it. It's just. Seems like Jerry Pritchett's had so many injuries in his upper body that just he had the pressing power a couple of years ago, but he's had bicep issues, shoulder issues, and his upper body's just kind of messed up, which is unfortunate because he's such a good competitor. But you know, if he's zero 385 log, that's not looking too great uh, for you know six weeks to go in the Arnold Classic, but hopefully um, heals up a little bit and it's just has a better day in the Arnold. And yeah, Jits Kramer also zeroed it and Belsack. So we're talking the majority of the competitors couldn't get a rep on the log. It's also a big wood log, which is harder than steel. And you're looking at the sun, the sky right off the coast of California, like they were at the Santa Monica Pier, is bright and blue. It's an amazing thing to look at until you have. A 385 pound log or even I've been in that situation with like a much much lighter log it's still it throws you off you look up and it's just vast and it's it's hard and then you know there's the crowd is kind of surrounding them um, I think that makes it a lot harder to press like my press that's why I mainly train it outside um, but not everyone lives in California where you can do that year-round uh, like myself but it, it if you're not used to it, it's going to throw your log press down a lot. So, uh, Belsack ended up getting two reps on the log, even though, it, I mean, I think he could get more healthy, but he has, looks like some sort of hip or groin issue, plus something in his both his biceps. Um, so he's not 100%. Rano Heinle is the most overlooked strongman right now, especially leading into the Arnold Classic. I have to really look at everything again, and I'm going to save that for my Arnold uh, preview video, which I will do uh, when it gets closer. But, I mean, he was a little banged up for a while. It looks like he was fairly healthy. He blasted the log up, got two reps, had another two that were very close to lockout, and he just couldn't stabilize it all the way. And he's a lot smaller competitor than everyone else. Uh, I think he's barely six feet tall, maybe just a hair under, you know, he's just around six feet, maybe not even six foot one, and what, 300-ish pounds, and just as strong as anyone there, and pretty fast and explosive. So this is the thing when people, like I, I made the video talking about how Larry Wheels is gonna do as my last video, and I'm not gonna make this a Larry Wheels video because everything is about Larry wheels right now, which is great, but it's also annoying at the same time, but it's for a good reason. When people say he's too small, right when you say that makes me think that you do not know what you're talking about as far as strongman. If you just look at, it doesn't mean you're going to beat the mountain, but no one else is anyways. You're not beating Shaw. It doesn't mean you can't be a great strongman like Rhino Hanla at, if you're six foot and 300 pounds. There's plenty of examples, including Graham Hicks, who won Britain's Strongest Man on this weekend as well, who's even shorter. Funny to say small about these guys, right? Um, then next to go was uh, Martins almost missed it completely. He pulled it up. He pulled it out and locked it out. Log looks a little shaky. He looked stronger in his training video on his YouTube channel um, the week before, like earlier in that week or the week before. So that's. It's a concern if a lot of athletes could get in between him because uh, he's probably going to be having to do reps with the feather log at the Arnold Classic in Columbus. But he got he got the one he got the one rep, which was good enough for six points, which was big in this contest. 
uh, Belshack and Heinle split second place points with two reps apiece. And then at the very end, Kiel Zikowski just probably what I mean, I'm going to say it's hard. There's three really impressive moments of the day. Um, and it's hard to say this wasn't the most impressive. I would say Martin's crushing the stone to shoulder at the end was more impressive just because it gave him the event win. Sorry, I kind of jumped ahead to the end there. You can stop watching now. I don't blame you, but Kozakowski just looking bored when everyone else was struggling and couldn't even do it, just blasted the reps, three reps with a 385, might have been 375, but I'm pretty sure it's 385 log. One motion, like an RP6. Like he could have, if he was really had to, he could have done six or seven. I mean, that was... I think that's arguably the most impressive feat of strength on the day. On a day full of impressive feats of strength. Then it goes into the deadlift. Uh, pretty much everyone was good up until Belshak. You know, just the groin and everything. He only went up to 765. He's much stronger than that. Uh, Kilzikowski hit 815. And it looked easier than his 816 at the Arnold Classic last year. So he's definitely improving, but he hasn't improved his deadlift enough for it not to uh, affect his uh, points, uh, you know, to how he's, he's going to beat the other, his peers at the event too much. And that's going to be a big factor in Ohio, and it, it was a big factor here as well. It was his lowest uh, placing on the day where uh, he ended up only getting, so 8.15 pretty much tied him for you know, second to last, other than the people that um, were out, which was Ozhikowski and uh, J.F. Caron. And then we kept going up. Everyone kind of bowed out uh, 860 or 855. And, you know, and then it was pretty much, we went on to, uh, hmm. we, we went on to 910, um, the only people that got it were Martins, Lisi's, Ronald Heinle, and Jerry Pritchett. And then we went up to 9.55. Heinle passed on the lift. Uh, Martins didn't have it. And Jerry Pritchett made it look as easy as uh, Kielsikowski's three reps with that log look. Like, this is warm-up. He was just getting, like, that was just a training. Like, yeah, that was a good top, you know, nice, heavy single for the day in training incredible I think Jerry Pritchett's doing what I think he's doing I'm not saying he got it for me he, you know it's, it's you don't have to be a, a genius to think that if there's fifty thousand dollars on the line to pull 500.5 kilos at, at the Arnold in Ohio that you train solely for that and you put everything else on the back burner burner and you train to get that 50 grand in that record for the biggest uh, strongman deadlift in history. And I think that's exactly what Jerry Pritchett's doing. And after watching him effortlessly lifting uh, 950 pounds, I'm saying he can do it. Maybe others can do it on that day, but I think 500 kilos plus is falling at the Arnold Classic. I, didn't, I, I was hesitant before, but when you see that, it makes you want to believe it. And I have to admit, I'm I'm a fan, and I, I get carried away, and I always want it to happen. I even predict, you know, a lot of people, I, I was, I, I get, my mind changes at the last minute with those things, and I like to say that they will happen when, instead, and I think uh, Jerry's going to beat Eddie Hall's record in Columbus, Ohio, and he's going to get that 50 grand. It just depends on if he splits it with someone else or not, but he's he's getting some of that money. Incredible. And yeah, Kilskowski only got how many points on the on that? Four and a half, which isn't bad for him for a deadlift, but he still lost uh you know a good amount of points to Lisi's and, and then it was like within a point or two. And then they did a four hundred pound sandbag carry for max distance and I, I was shocked at how easily these guys I mean I shouldn't be, they're so strong, but they all picked it up effortlessly. Um 
Kilzakowski went, what was it, like 150 feet? And it, but he looked like that's good enough, and he stopped. And this is where, this is where his deadlift placing him so low in that event compared to everything else really hurts him depending on where it is in the contest. I think it's an advantage that it's the first event in Ohio because when the next events are events like that where there's a rep amount to beat or a distance to beat, um, Heinle went just far enough and you know regripped and everything to get 151 feet and then Martins did the same. Martins went for broke to make sure he got points over Kilzakowski. Kilzakowski looked like he could carry it further than anyone on that day, but when you don't have that mark to beat, it's hard to push for that extra foot or two, um, like when the people go after. And that's where um, the deadlift, he, not only he lose points in the deadlift, but it makes him lose points in the in the next event as well. So he lost, you know, a point and a half there, where he, you know, he has all the capability to get it. And then it was the uh, stone to shoulder. Uh, most people struggled to get it. Then pretty much uh, Heinle looked very strong on it. I mean, for especially for how he's built, you wouldn't think that he can hoist uh, that heavy of a stone, what, 385-ish, um, up to his shoulder that easily. And he had the mark to beat, what was it, two reps? Most people struggled with it overall. I mean, yeah, almost half the field zeroed it couple got one rep, Heinle got two, and then, uh, yeah, and then to go, next to go was Kilzakowski, who just, again, like, lackadaisically just did five, and he thought, that's good enough, no one's gonna best it, and we saw him so dominant in that, uh, with the stone up to his, uh, shoulder at the Arnold Classic last year, but Martins wasn't there, and Martins trained on that stone. That stone came from Odhagen's gym. I think he might be able to give uh, uh, Kilzkowski a run for his money on that event, and he went out like a berserker to get that money. For you know, because there's ten thousand dollars for first place, I believe, and four for second. That's not official. Don't quote me on it. But there's always a, a big gap. First gets a lot more than second. When your job's strong, man, Martins went out and he, he first off, he's, he wants to beat him. They have a great rivalry going, which uh, I don't think a lot of people realize. Martins has bested Kilzakowski more often in contests than the other way around. Uh, so he's winning the, the rivalry, and it's the best rivalry going in strong and friendly rivalry. Yes, it's better than Eddie Hall and Robert Oberst. Not as far as the shit talking, but the actual performances against each other, far superior. And uh, he went out like a berserker, got five reps. That crowd erupted, and it was awesome. This was a great day for Strongman. Uh, props to everyone involved. And if you're not excited at what this showed as a preview for the Arnold Classic in Ohio, then there's no way that you watched me talk about it for the last 20 minutes. I'm Kale Beck. Thanks for watching. Go to at Starting Strongman uh, for all your Strongman uh, training news, startingstrongman.com. Follow me on my personal accounts at Let Kale Lift. And uh, yeah, be sure if you make sure to check out the Arnold Classic in Ohio. And you know this was the I, the production for this was fantastic. The live stream was the best live stream I've seen uh, for Strongman. And this is a great time to be a fan of Strongman, or even to be a Strongman uh, to be a pro Strongman. We're, we're living in good times, and let's just keep this ball rolling. Hit like and subscribe for future content uh, and news and everything going on in the world of Strongman.